years, we're going to see a real switch in how people um, really start their business and how purpose is really more important. People are awaking. A brand is not what you say it is, what they say it is, right? It's something, it's a feeling that your audience has. I haven't done the podcast for a while now, and I'm a little bit rusty, but it feels really good to be back in it. I had a very interesting conversation in today's podcast with Florian Philip. He's the CEO of Three Angles and a brand strategist. He's a very awesome guy, and he's really kind and really wants to help others. He's originally from France, but he lived and worked a long time in different countries in Asia, and right now he's in Los Angeles. We talked about cultural brand and brand strategy, and if you are into those, you will probably enjoy this podcast. If you are not sure what brand strategy is, then keep watching or listening, because this is going to change completely your mind. So, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, pushing me a little bit to do the podcast, <laughs> because... I want to do it for a long time now and I was thinking to start, but I wasn't. So <laughs> you was the one to push me a little bit more to, to start. It's what we need to do for each other. <laughs> Thank you for being my guest, my first guest mm -hmm. after a while. <laughs> Is, uh, am I your first COVID guest? Mm, no, uh, the second one. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, let me know, uh, let us know a little bit more about you, who you are, what you do. My name is Florian Philippe, or Florian Philippe, if you want to say it with an English accent. It's very hard for me to say my name with an accent. <laughs> uh, so my friend called me Flo. It's easier for everybody. Um, so as you can probably hear from my accent, I am from France. Uh, but I left France um, pretty early in my 20s. Uh, right after finishing business school, I uh, left to China, um, worked there for a design school. So not in the design school, but for the design school, I was part of the staff, um, helping out the design students um, show their work. I was planning an exhibition for them. So that was one of the first um, jump in the design world, I guess. I always, so as a business student, I always cared more about the impression that we give, the how the presentation that we do look like, you know, mm -hmm. I was always trying to make things look cool and impressive. So I guess this is where I started to be, you know, caring about first impression and, and how branding works, I guess. After China, I moved to Vietnam where I was doing web design. I was learning a lot about how to make websites for clients. I started doing like $500 WordPress websites for clients over there. Um, and I was partnering up with a design agency that was focused on the identity, creating the, the logos, the colors, everything for the company. So working together, uh, providing some, some branding. Um, after three years in Vietnam, I moved back to France. I worked for, uh, in the fashion industry for a little bit. Um, I was doing marketing, uh, a little bit of design, online uh, marketing and website design. Then uh, after a year with a friend from business school, I really wanted to move back to Asia. And we decided together to move to Taiwan and to open our own agency over there. So in 2017, we opened uh, Three Angles, which is uh, really... Uh, reconnecting with the business roots that we've learned and that we've you know applied throughout the years with the design world so really trying to gap the world because those two worlds don't understand each other you know business people they want to solve business issues and designers they want to make the world a more beautiful place so you know how can we connect that and, and solve you know everybody's problems uh, my friend went back to uh, France uh, in 2018. Uh, so I continued doing that for a while by myself. Then I moved to the US. I'm still continuing to do it, but no, I'm in the US. So I moved uh, almost two years ago. I 
No, really focus on brand strategy. I really don't want to, I'm not a designer by, you know, background. Mm -hmm. So I try to focus on what I, I think my value is in extracting from people, um, you know, what their brand purpose is, you know, what mm -hmm. their brand should look like, what kind of feeling they want to give to people and have them really right there with their positioning and, and focus. And at the same time, I'm also a brand strategy in-house guy, I guess, for a company called Fourth Sector Innovation here mm -hmm. in Ontario, California. And what I do here is manage all different brands. So we have like five different brands to manage with the company. But what mm -hmm. we do also is we are an innovation center with an incubator, accelerator, co-working space. So we help startups, you know, early stage startups with their ideas and making sure that they, you know, they start their startup venture on the right foot. Mm -hmm. So my job is also to help those startups with their brand strategy. So sorry if it was too long. Awesome. I'll try to, no, that's to give awesome. you a big picture. <laughs> I love that you lived and traveled like everywhere. <laughs> and I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, Will you go back? As soon as I can. Oh, yeah. Awesome. There's Which so country? many countries. Which I don't city? know yet. I really want to go to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. What was your your favorite right now from Asia? If you were to go back, what's what city? You know, I loved Shanghai for so long. Mm -hmm. I didn't live there more than a year, but I have an extremely good memory of it. But that was 2012. So I don't mm -hmm. know. I changed. The city probably changed a little bit, but not too much. I guess that uh, I don't know if I will have the same feeling about Shanghai because I've changed. Mm -hmm. And I guess my expectations of life are a little bit different. I mean, my 30s now, I'm a dad, I'm married. Mm -hmm. And Shanghai as a young, you know, 20 year old is, is pretty amazing to live. Taiwan on the other end is like a mix between China and Japan, which I really like. I really like both worlds, but you know, they both have pros and cons. And I feel like Taiwan is really a good mix between because I like Shanghai for it's like a bit of craziness. Everything is moving so fast. People mm -hmm. are very, very um, direct. Mm -hmm. Like they, they don't like, they like drinking. They like to, <laughs> to, you know, chat to each other and Japan is very more respectful to each other, mm. more discreet. A bit shy, I would say. And so Taiwan is really a mix between both. And, and I like that also about Japan, that, you know, people have a lot of respect to each other. So it's good. So, yeah, I, I would recommend Taiwan to a lot of people, especially now because they are doing extremely good. It's very safe, second safest country in the world. And there's a lot happening, a lot of uh, startups starting over there. And, and it's also what I like. It sounds a bit selfish, but... I like when a country is not too famous or popular. So I feel mm -hmm. like it's kind of a, you know, it's my secret kind of thing. Like if, yeah. you go to, <laughs> if you go to a lot of places where, you know, there's so many expats and tourists, it's, you know. Uh, so one question that I ask every guest, that's the, the main theme of the, of the podcast, um, which is called the distance to destination is what's your destination? and how far you think you are to get there. So what's your goal right now? It's, it's, I have a lot of, of goals somewhere in my mind, but not really well articulated, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, business wise, I really want to zero in on brand strategy. I want to focus on that. At the same time, I, I have some plans and I want to find some way to scale that. So it can grow outside of what I can do myself with, you know, clients directly. But first, my focus is to help more clients. I want to, you know, be able to do a lot of education on the branding side. Uh, things like I think a lot of business don't really understand what branding is and how that can help them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I... I, I feel more pleasure into educating someone about branding than actually doing branding with them or for them. That's so good. <laughs> that's something that's I want to maybe yeah. consider. And, um, and yeah, grow my, I don't want to, 
I don't know, maybe an agency in the future. I don't know if it's the, the right thing to do. I just know that I, I can't sit. Like as soon as I reach something, I need to go to the next level. And even if I, and hopefully soon enough, I'm going to do pretty well in, in brand strategy consulting. How, how far you are right now to, to get to that point of? Pretty far. <laughs> From like, a scale um, of one to 10, like 10, you are zeroing on brand strategy. <laughs> well, I don't think I would ever reach 10, but I think I'm like two or three. And the good thing is, uh, well, like a few years ago, I knew that branding was something I wanted to focus on because of how it's connected to business. And it's not just, you know, making things look beautiful. It's much more to it than that. But I didn't really know there was a job called brand strategist. And I still don't like to call myself that or brand strategy expert, or, you know, however you want to call it. And a few years ago, I didn't know you could really be that only provide only strategy and make tons of money from it. So when I heard for the first time, Fabian Gerhalter speak with uh, Chris Do, saying that I only do brand strategy. I, mm -hmm. I do workshop for one day, $10,000 and I'm done. Like, I don't want to know anything about how you're going to apply it. And mm -hmm. I was like, that's exactly what I want to do. I didn't know that <laughs> existed. I didn't know that was even possible. So since that day, that kind of became my goal. You know, to, okay. to do that was what the spark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that gave awesome. me a lot of focus. I still mm -hmm. need to work a lot on my focus, my own positioning, who I'm mm -hmm. trying to help, and, and I'm actually working with him. He's mentoring me on on, on different strategy, so that helps. Yeah, uh, I think that a lot of people that think that they're doing branding, they don't really understand it yet. Uh, so if I will ask you what Branding, what's brand strategy? How you will define it? Big question. Um, so first, uh, I think to understand what branding is, we need to go back to the definition of Martin Neumeyer of what a brand is. And we both know that uh, a brand is not what you say it is, what they say it is, right? It's something, it's a feeling that your audience has. Mm -hmm. So when you understand that you don't own your brand directly, then you understand more how branding works and how branding is the job of trying to influence the feelings and the thoughts that your audience has. It's not just saying, hey, we are this, so you have to believe it's this, right? It's more about understand who the audience is, um, how we can help them and how, how we can create something that's appealing to them. So it's a mix of business strategy and creativity and so really to me, what branding is, is the meaning of strategic and creative process uh, to create a brand that's unique um, through the design of an identity and a consistent experience. So there is a lot that, that goes together here. Um, I think a brand has to be unique Mm -hmm. There's no point doing branding if you just want to do something that's already been done or copied exactly. You want to mm -hmm. find what makes you different. That's the whole idea of branding, right? As Seth Godin uh, says it uh, very well when he explains how something that's remarkable, that stands out from the crowd, really can have an impact. And so it's really what branding also does is how do you make yourself different? How do you make yourself unique? And it's not only by just how you look, right? It's choosing a different market or choosing a different positioning, being more expensive, being, you know, being cheaper. And there's a lot of ways you can be different. Then you have to create an identity around that. And then you need to create a uh, consistent experience. And the experience is everything to me, the experience with branding is everything, every touch point that you have with the brand. So that can be just seeing the logo, going on the website, when you call them, and you have mm -hmm. an answering machine, you can have uh, music. So this kind of, you know, the music that you choose is going to be reflecting of the identity and the tone of voice. And how do you want to be perceived as a brand? So that's kind of a long definition, but. 
Yeah, you had the sort definition and then you explained it. So mm-hmm. those three are like, um, if you could define a good brand uh, identity, it will be those those three. My company is actually called Three Angle. That came from the idea of having a process in three steps, and that changed along the years in how those steps were, you know, merging. And it's not only steps; it's also three different things that you have to see from different angles and merge together. It's not just a step, like you do something and you forget it. It's like everything has to work together. So there's brand strategy, brand identity, and brand experience. The strategy is going to affect everything else. The identity is, you know, the tone of voice, what it's going to look like, and experience is what I said earlier about um, every single touch point of... yeah. The audience. Does that? Does I, I the think that the, the experience of the of the client of the customer it's yeah very important for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's the three things combined, and I like the, the logo yeah. that you're working on, like the three. Thank you. Three yeah, I'm trying to doing even though myself. Trend. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Go. <laughs> go even, even though myself right now in those three angles, I focused much more on the strategy part. Because that part is is gonna affect everybody, everything else. And I'm not a good designer, so I prefer to work with designers for the identity part. Same thing for the experience. What I do for those part is help um, overseeing and making sure that everything that's been done is um, relevant with the strategy and is aligned with the strategy. But in within the strategy, and there's so much to do. And you, you asked about differentiation and which is really the core of brand strategy and how do you make yourself different? And, and my take on this is really if you cannot be in the top three or five in your market, it's really create your own market. Like go, you can do the exact same thing just by saying you do it for different people. You're going to be seen as different and unique. So it's really be the big fish in the small pound. Mm-hmm. So to be number one in, or number two on the smaller uh, yeah. audience instead of number five in the bigger audience. Yeah, exactly. Totally agree. And then you can you can grow to another pound. Mm-hmm. You can and outgrow I, the pound. I also think that it's very important that you that you know what's your strong and what's your weakness, so you can have other people working on that. Uh, yeah. So that, that's a good uh, thing to have as a a leader as a CEO of a company, so you know how to distribute uh, I, work. I really, <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of creatives um, like us, we have that, that problem at the beginning that I think we have the, the, the hunger of learning always more about, you know, like, oh, okay, I want to make websites and I want to learn about SEO. I want to learn about digital uh, marketing, social media ads. Um, then I want to do some video production and, you know, and you move on to, you, you want to do everything for everybody. And like when your customers is trying to, uh, you know, look for you, they can't find you because you're, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you're all over the place. grown in the, the <laughs> with things that everybody's doing. Mm-hmm. And then they don't see you as an expert. Doesn't mean you mm-hmm. cannot do those other things, but you mm-hmm. have to choose one to advertise and, and brand yourself as. Yep. Totally agree. <laughs> you want you to say something. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm more into video. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's good. And, and right now I'm trying to be also on the um, teaching, let's say. <laughs> I'm thinking to start uh, my own uh, core online course or something, but yeah, <laughs> mm. I have a lot of clients that are doing that now. Probably they wake up be- because of COVID. But do you yeah, mean like I was... uh, as doing your own courses or like focusing on helping people who are teaching? Both, <laughs> actually, the first one was yeah. the idea was to start a course about helping other doing an online course. <laughs> Inception. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. As soon as you can, I think the, the real power about doing this kind of focus and, and being expert 
be able to explain in one sentence what do you do for who like mm -hmm. sometimes you're gonna meet a lot of people that don't match this and you mm -hmm. shouldn't try to adapt to them that's what the mistake i've done for so many years i would mm -hmm. meet someone that's like oh, i need a website and then suddenly i'm a web designer someone that needs a logo i'm a graphic designer you know i always adapt but i think the real power in doing um a really focused service for a very focused target is let's say I'm a graphic designer for accountants. And I meet a lot of people who are not accountants. Mm -hmm. I still say I'm graphic designer for accountants. The one day, you know, um, one of the companies you meet, the people you meet are going to meet an accountant. And they'll be like, oh, I know the exact right person for you because that guy does only work for accountants. So you have the power of the network that really grows. And, and when you say you provide the only solution for you, like I'm an accountant, why would I go choose someone that does graphic design for everybody when there is one that's just for me? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> exactly. Totally agree. Uh, uh, I think you wanted to say something before <laughs> or ask me something or... Uh, about Did video? Want... Oh. No, I don't. Um, it was like five minutes ago. Oh, so. uh, I don't know if it's uh, too early or if you wanted to ask more, but uh, I really want to learn also about the my my goal. So my focus now that I've, I'm trying to explore, I'm not zeroing in on it yet. I'm still trying to do some customer discovery. I know there is a need for it, but the problem is... Mm, there's an education gap. Um, so my target is to, because I lived in Asia for seven years, I want to help Asian startup move to American or European market, especially uh, helping them with brand strategy, what they should uh, focus on, how they should, should position themselves. The problem is branding is really at the, like most of um, companies that I work with, they don't really know what branding is mm -hmm. or they would they would say oh yeah it's just graphic design mm -hmm. which is really not uh, uh, in the culture and not really focused and not something they focus on this really at the list of the priorities they focus more on like really mass production or like numbers um like if i invest something in you how much am i getting getting back and it's very hard to say with branding mm -hmm. so this is who i'm trying to help and I understand those differences of culture. And I think one of the, the most important thing in branding is purpose. We, we don't talk about that too much. But if you look, if you watch the video from Simon Sinek, Start With Why, or The Golden Circle, he really talks about, you know, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And I think that's, that's something that really matters in branding. Not only on how you look like as a company to others, like, oh, this company has a good purpose. I believe in them. You know, I believe the same thing. I'm going to choose this company. But also, most importantly, is inside the company when all the employees go to work every morning for a company that has a real purpose. You know, that you create really a company culture that, that helps the company grow much more than if it was just faking it, I guess. So... And it's really not engraved in the Asian. I don't want to generalize all Asia, but um, and I know in China, India, Taiwan, uh, Vietnam, culture uh, purpose is not really something they focus on when they have a business idea. It's more okay. It's it's really a numbers game more, and which is you know they have been very successful at it. But I think in the next years we're going to see a real switch in how people um, really start their business and how purpose is really more important people are mm -hmm. awaking you know how, how can you um, help someone a company to find their purpose i know that's uh, <laughs> really hard to do but um, how can you help them or maybe how can you help them understand that what it's um i guess you have to be some kind of psychologue mm. like a therapist mm -hmm. to, to really sit down with people who are in charge 
Like if you only talk with the marketing manager that is under, you know, the founders or people who are helping the company moving forward, it's, it's, it's harder, but, you know, being able to, to ask like, why did you even start? Like, what was your idea when you, you know, when you started, well, what did you see? Where was the opportunity that you saw that made you try this? And, and, and it, the, it's also hard when a company is just starting, they don't have an audience yet. They don't really know who they're going to be working with. So there's two different ways to see it. Either it's a startup with no data mm -hmm. or, you know, they don't have a customer base yet. So you really have to go with a gut feeling from the founder. Like they started mm -hmm. because of reason. So as a brand strategy or consultant, you really have to extract what are those reasons, being able to uh, put them on paper with very uh, clear and short sentences. And for a company that's much bigger, that has data, sometimes I've seen, I've had meeting with like big corporation in Taiwan, like governmental um, agencies, they were planning all the, the international trade shows. And like, like, we don't know really our, what our target is, like we just, Anybody that is interested, join us. Like it's it's like there is no real purpose and no real mm -hmm. target so audience that they want to have. The thing that you sent before, like it's more like general, but they don't have like a focus on a specific. Yeah, and it's target, so sometimes it's very very hard to extract. Like, how do you want to be seen? What is the culture of the company? I don't know. <laughs> you know, and uh, I've seen that a lot. So the question. How do you, you know, find the purpose is, is I'm getting better at it, but there was stuff at the beginning. You really have to, you know, be able to read, um, uh, people's, you know, you can see in their eyes or it's getting harder now because we cannot meet in person. But when someone start, if you really have to extract something and it's hard for them, and then the second after you mention something and they can't stop talking about it, then you can sense there's something there. Right. So you keep asking questions about that it's really i don't mm -hmm. have the answers they have yeah i'm just trying to extract yeah. it or you just have the good answer. questions <laughs> that's you have to I guess. what's the the uh the ultimate the your best question that you will always ask <laughs> if you could ask only one question <laughs> why <laughs> yeah, i think just that's why. the main question yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. um there's an exercise that i like doing also which is a bit more advanced in the process but I like asking clients, okay, imagine your, your best client that you already have. They love you, they trust you, they work with you all the time. And they meet randomly in a bar, restaurant, or you know, outside. Your best client meets your ideal prospect, someone that you're not working with yet, they don't know you, but you really want to work with that person, that client. How do you think your best client would describe your brand, your company, your product to that person? Like if it was a really short, like five minute conversation, what would they say? And when you said, when you, you know, explore that idea, you have people really looking at their company from outside, which is something they really never do. It's, it's, it's very important that they reflect on, okay, how are we seen from outside, what we want to be seen as. And um, yeah, you you can explore a lot of things that way. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. I'm making them see that that's uh, I think will change uh, their perspective for for sure. Um, I remember that I contact you uh, because I saw that uh, in the future pro on the pro group um, that you traveled for so many years in the Asian countries and you're from France. So I find a lot of similarities. My mother is from France and. Um, yeah, I want to, one of my goals was to travel to Vietnam and stay mm -hmm. there for as long as I can and work from there, um, as a digital nomad, let's say, or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So then I, I saw that you, uh, you lived there for so many years. So I, I, I needed to contact you. <laughs> and when I saw that you're focusing on the Asian businesses and help them out, I, I was like, yeah, that's the perfect. Uh, the perfect match for you, I, I know. <laughs> mm. 
And yeah, I really appreciate those cultural different things. There are differences. I really appreciate those cultural differences. I think I'm someone that's pretty open minded. I don't, I really don't try to judge. And I know in branding, this is what we should care about judging because first impression matter. Don't judge a book by its cover. It's completely opposite of what we do as designers when we design the cover. So, but when I, you know, when I explore people or countries or places, I always try to, you know, like as if I was born yesterday, you know, and, and explore it as if you think it was new. So I'm not trying to put any judgment. And, you know, when you talked about you going to Vietnam, like one thing I would really enjoy is to, because I live there, I know it, I would love to be there with you and show you the good spots uh, like <laughs> as a designer who you should meet so you can connect with, you know, um, mm -hmm. people who do that over there. So I don't know if there's something to explore and, you know, the feeling I have to want it to, to, to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Always just, you know, that's maybe uh, why you want to, to teach and to <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, so you lived in Europe, Asia, now in the US, uh, what's the main cultural difference in general, in life, mm -hmm. lifestyle maybe, or not only business? <laughs> it's, it's a big, uh, it's a big question. <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> cultural differences and, and even within continents. And this is something I actually wanted to ask you, where is the branding culture in Greece? Like. I've been to Greece twice, the Greece twice, but never really experienced walking there. <laughs> I want to, because you were explaining about Asia that they don't get uh, branding and uh, mm -hmm. all this thing that maybe in the US it's more, um, they're more used to now, but I think it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's not in, maybe it's not uh, in a, in that a big scale, but most of the people, most of the businesses, they don't know or they don't care about it so maybe bigger businesses are more influenced influenced from europe or us but the smaller one are, are not in that category yeah yeah it depends what scale you're talking about because even in china you have huge corporation that focus a lot on branding um but if you talk about everyday businesses even between europe and the us US is extremely good at marketing and they create marketing, but you know, branding, I think comes even before that. So to do marketing, you need to do branding, but so they're very good at it. It's all about, you know, it's a show business. So they, they, they know how to show how good they are. They know they, they care about how they look like and not every business is right, but they know they have to, to care a little bit about how things look like from outside. In France, I think they un understand that, but at the same time, design is a commodity. Like you can hire a designer for very cheap online and you have something that looks good, then it's good enough. You don't really focus about, you know, the, the real branding as a whole aspect, I feel like. So there is, it's not perfect, but at the same time, you know, France is famous for, you know, the, the, the best designers in the world. I'm not talking about graphic designers, but you know, like product design or fashion design. So I would say we have, first we have the, the, the luxury and the chance to have that image outside of the, outside of France, you know, French designer of a good image, I guess. Um, but I guess there is also, you know, that culture of creativity, which is good, but at the same time, it's, I don't feel it's very connected to business. It's like you have the fashion and the design world and then you have the business world. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's my understanding. And I haven't worked in France. We were with French clients for <laughs> a long time. So this is the memory I have of it. And as I said earlier, in Asia, it's really it's purpose and design is really at the list of the priorities. Mm, I see. And so um, you said you would say Greece is more like Towards Asia or more like towards Europe? Mm, I, I say it's, culture. Mm, maybe towards Asia. I think we are always a little bit back, <laughs> a few years back, let's say. <laughs> yeah. 
um, uh, a lot of things that are in the US are like trending. Uh, they will trend here after two or three years, maybe. Oh, okay. So like podcasting is it's now starting here. <laughs> There's not a lot of podcasts or something, but for the US, it's something for that in the last years, it's huge. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's already too old now. It's uh, Yeah, like it's everyone's past. doing it, <laughs> even <Yeah>. me. <laughs> so what's the, what's the next trend, right? It's 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 hard to, you know, be the first and and, and know where this is going to go. You can't, you have to you know, try, I guess. I think even in the design um, aspect, some the colors have a lot of different meanings, different, cult oh, different yeah, cultures. Oh, yeah, that's true. So mm -hmm. this is something I'm trying to learn, but at the same time, I know like, I'm not good at choosing colors for any cultures, mm -hmm. but it's important for me to understand which colors not to use in different yeah. cultures. Like, Does this even um, cancel the <laughs> color theory or something? Because we learn like color theory in graphic design school, but it's like for the yeah. Western. Um, exactly. It's yeah. more towards the Western businesses, let's say. Yeah. That's psychology. the red color means that, but if you're talking mm -hmm. all over the world, it doesn't mean the same. So yeah, it doesn't even think so. matter what color you put. <laughs> yeah. And I think now it's like, there's so much around us that yes, yeah, some colors will have a different meaning to you, but I think it's all depending about the context. Um, I think, yeah, Chris though made a video about that really explaining you know, the, the color red when you're driving has a completely different meaning than when you are in the drink section in the store, right? One side you have like traffic light that's red, don't go, stop. And then you have the, the happiness of Coca-Cola that's like <laughs> supposed to be exciting. So it's all about context mm, that's true. and something, um, but there's some, still some colors that you need to be aware of when you do branding in different countries i was when i was in france i was working uh in the fashion industry for a hat creator she was doing like very fancy beautiful hats that, were, that was sitting all over the world and what well, she learned it the hard way that if you do a green hat and sell it to china well first it won't sell because the meaning of a green hat in china means that you've been cheated on <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, those kind of things uh, are important to know when you do, you know, branding wow. for different countries. I and see. so really, like, my goal is not to do Asia to Asia branding because I'm French, I'm European, I come from the Western world. It's like when you ask someone to translate, like a good translator or an interpret is always going to translate something is, is he or she learned to his own language. Mm-hmm. Like I cannot pretend to ever do good branding for the Asian market. What I'm trying to do is really help them uh, understanding my culture, what I've learned in where I come from and trying mm -hmm. to, you know, use that French designer aspect. <laughs> yeah. For, for the thing you were talking before, I remember in there the, uh, like the symbolism, like semiotics, maybe uh, the, uh, even the icons that we use. Um, I remember the one that um, breathes smoke out of the nose. It's for the West is like an angry emoji, mm -hmm. like I'm angry. But I remember that when they created that in Asia or I don't remember which country, maybe Japan, <laughs> it was mm -hmm. like, um, like not even relaxed, but uh, like I succeeded, I did something so I can Bring mm. out and <laughs> so it's really the opposite. Different, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How you can bring like the Asian businesses to the West, let's say. I think part of what I need to do and where I help them is understanding really, like first extracting mm -hmm. and finding that purpose, that positioning, like who the audience is, like really understanding them and helping them understand that because sometimes. Mm -hmm. When you work for a company for years and years, you, you know, you're inside a bubble, you don't really know what it looks like from outside. So first, my job is to bring a new perspective in understanding 
themselves, then how do they want to be f- looking up, you know, uh, looking from outside and understanding those different cultural aspects. And, you know, if you do that in France, it's not going to have an impact as much as you would if you did the same in Asia. So it's really making them understand that, you know, you have to adapt. Yeah, I think that the, as you said, the culture is different, so they don't understand that yet. I think that's uh, that's something good for you, for what you're trying to do, mm-hmm. because it's going to be one of the, I don't know many people doing that, so <laughs> um, you'll be one of the first mm-hmm. ones to, to do it. And because you want to do, because you like to teach, <laughs> not only doing branding, but you like to teach brand strategy, yeah. I think that's a really big bonus for you to, to help them understand. So. Yeah, the best the best thing you know, when you do a cl- uh, meeting with a client is you know when you see the eyes like oh wow, and not only when you teach them something about something that you know, but when you know you sit with, down with them, you extract you know what is your culture, what is your mission, vision, you know all the strategy, and then you sit back to them, and they're like oh yeah, that actually sounds very good. Like this is us. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you have that that feeling that they just understood themselves and they never did before. Mm. So you find that like finding that peace of mind, um, well, helping them get that peace of mind is is pretty satisfying, I guess. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and this is something I actually, if I didn't do a business school, I think I would have uh, gone to a psychology school. Hmm. Yeah, because help them in this way, it's like psychology. You're you're asking the the right questions so they can understand themselves, what they really. Uh, believe in, let's say, <laughs> the hard part to go to the Asian culture because, as you said before, they're looking a lot on, in numbers. So to explain something that's more uh, with <laughs> with no results, let's like results mm-hmm. in paper. Uh, so that's maybe really difficult to do. Yes. So so yeah. How can I? Question is how do I show them the benefits of branding really? Right. So how do I make myself even like marketing myself, um, positioning myself. And this is exact same thing as I'm working on it now, but I'm doing the same thing as what I would advise them is to not sell the features or the products, not say like, I'm not saying branding. I try to use the word branding as less as possible. Mm-hmm. Instead, I would focus on the benefits of branding. Um, you know, it's either creating more loyalty to their customers, growing their business, of course, is one, but everybody says that, um, you know, making them look different. It's focusing really on, and even that is not the last benefit at the end. It's like grow your business, make more money, be famous, Mm -hmm. you know, these kind of things. (laughs) And you have to. Yeah, I think branding can do all of that. So it's hard to choose which one you want to advertise on. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it. I am. It, uh, um, it changed the branding. You know, I think the marketing really changed. Like, uh, you don't sell your product like mm-hmm. before. You were selling like you have those that, that phone has that spec or that thing. Yeah. Well, especially but well, now if you look it's at- more like what you want to believe in, what uh, kind of uh, person you are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it's, and I'm actually reading, I'm very late on my reading and you know that I'm still oh, on yeah. this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> and, and, and the last thing I was really interested about is especially this one. It tells you about the difference, the, the evolution of branding and marketing over the years from mass um, production to mass customization. First, you focus mm. on, hey, here's our product, go and buy it, right? This is this, and this is all the features of the product. Then over the years, you focus more and a lot of companies are still, I would say 90% of companies are still focused on that. This is our product, this is the features, go buy it. Um, then you have the, the benefits of the features, like mm-hmm. what this is going to help you do. Mm-hmm. Then switching more to what this is going to make you feel. But the last one, I think that's really important is who are you, right? As, as you said, when you choose a product, that's, 
that helps you what or like that shows tribe. you yeah <laughs> you want to self-identification be. like this is why yeah, i'm buying this brand because it represents me yeah so that's awesome i will have the link of the book in the description <laughs> for anyone that wants to, to get it. Uh, I also remember that you're keeping notes from the book and then you're turning them into like... Um, Tactical small... branding. So this is my new goal. That's something I've just started doing. Um, you don't know what you know. And mm -hmm. it's hard sometimes when you... You know, you learn a lot of things. You learn... Like, I want to learn all the time. And this is actually not always easy because the more I learn, the more I change my process and how I do it. So, and I feel like the, the things that I've learned a long time ago are kind of old now, even though they are not, there's no current chronological order in, in, in things that I've learned. Right. But <clears throat> I always want to improve with the last things I've learned. And in the end, you know, you, you gather all this knowledge and it becomes of use to you. So you don't know. A lot of things you know people don't know because either they're not interested in this topic or they didn't read, they never knew. So I think I'm trying to push myself to share what I've what I learned from those books and, and things, you know, all those experience from the 10 years of doing branding almost. A bit less. Um and yes, yeah, so yeah, to me, awesome. everything I write sounds obvious to me, but I Hopefully, this is going to be helpful to someone. Yeah. If not, well, it's you know practice, I guess. Yeah, starting this exact book, I decided to, uh, in the end of each chapter, to just tweet whatever just I just learned, not not the exact words, but that's yeah, that's the idea, just to to share it. Um, mm -hmm. Where people can see those uh, those posts. I'm actually working on my new website. I have a very cool idea that I want to share. It's I don't know if I should share it. Actually, it's I've never seen it to you. on any other <laughs> website, and it's probably a very bad idea. That's going to be very confusing. But the idea I have is to start the website from the bottom and go up as like oh your company yeah. is there, and I help you. You know, different stages. You know, like almost like I'm going to have different representation. I'm thinking about the rockets that goes up mm. I'm thinking about the fish that's going mm -hmm. uh, to a, uh, that's growing into a, a smaller pound, I guess. So, you know, that idea of going up instead of going down. Yeah, that's good. I, I, I want to do this, this exact idea on my uh, thesis uh, project uh, because it was about climbing. So I want to start like uh -huh. and get to the top. Uh, I cool. didn't end up doing it, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I get the idea. It's, the, it, it's, I thought it would be much easier in terms of coding, but anyway. And uh, <laughs> the other thing I'm doing right now is just Facebook a little bit and, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And this is just my own personal Instagram for now. I don't know if I will ever do like a three angles one. I probably should. I really am bad yeah. at social media. Yeah, me and, too. <laughs> and let's try to do a little bit of LinkedIn. But if anybody out there wants to help me, <laughs> I will have your links in the description. And everything. So thank you. Uh, one thing I want to ask you before. So we talk about helping Asian uh, businesses to get to the Western market. But what can the Western market learn right now from the Asian businesses? Mm. You mean a Western company is trying to go to China or learning in general? No, in general, is there something that they do in their culture differently that we could uh, adopt maybe or that hmm. could help us? <laughs> I like really, and I think a lot of countries share that, but in the business culture in China especially is, and I probably say that because I'm French and I like drinking, but in China, a lot of the first business meetings happen around a lot of drinks without even talking about business. And so there's really a culture of knowing each other, um, becoming um, almost friends, creating relationship um, that I really like. And then the next meeting, you talk about business. I remember, and in China, um, 
when you share with someone else, there's a sign of respect when you try to share under. Okay. So it's <laughs> ah, so in. if I go under, I respect you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so I remember one of the first days I was in China, it was lunch and you had those those two business uh, men like in suit with a tie and everything. And they were at the table drinking a lot and they were having fun. And at some point they cheers and they were trying to go and they were like, no, I respect you, I respect <laughs> you. And they ended up being on the ground like that, trying to cheer to each other. I, and yeah, that was amazing. I would always That's remember awesome. that. That was very uh, strong. I didn't understand because it was just the first yeah, days I was yeah. in China. If, if you didn't explain it and I just saw mm -hmm. it, I was like, what? <laughs> what are yeah. they doing? <laughs> but so, I, I like the idea of knowing each other before starting because I'm an introvert. So if I know the other person and connect with him as a friend, it's easier for me to, to work with them. Yeah. So that's, that's a good and, idea. And I think this is something that's, that's switching. There's a transition. Like when I, I first made some business in Taiwan, like we would use like they use line as a communication app and in france like you would never chat with business partner a client or, or anybody your boss or whatever like you don't chat like you send emails um maybe maybe if you have a slack or you know a business chat yeah it's more but like business I had, oriented yeah mm -hmm. i had clients like reach out to me on on facebook over there and that would be very open i guess like in conversations yeah. I was like you mix a bit of personal and business and mm -hmm. in France sometimes it can be very yeah you don't mix both like you have the business yeah world yeah I feel a lot of times <laughs> even with mm -hmm. clients that we don't need to be that <laughs> that strict with that we could, we could be more casual it's okay yeah like there's no it's not a matter of life and death we're all doing business we all have lives let's you know let's just work together if you know, we like each other. Exactly. So when you were in uh, Asia, when you lived there, uh, what was the, let's say the most interesting or the most funny experience you had? <laughs> Is there something you remember like wow. really clearly to that day <laughs> that you'll never forget? You know, the, the sad thing about that question is the first days, the first weeks, the first month, everything is amazing. Every day you see something amazing and then you get used to it. So I remember the last, you know, at the end of, of my journey in Asia, hopefully this is not the end forever, but you would see things in the street and you look at it and you don't, like, that's normal. And then you look at it again and I was like, if that happened in France or if I had people from France seeing that right now, they would be freaking out. like. I remember in Vietnam seeing a guy on his uh, scooter or moped, depending where you're from and how you call it, with a half, <laughs> well, a pig cut in half without any protection on there, like <laughs> driving with it, or like you see people with trees on the scooters. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting used to it, but it's still crazy. But I guess my best memory would be really my first day ever uh, arriving to Asia in Shanghai. Arrived. Uh, during the night, woke up at 5 a.m., took my backpack. I didn't even have a phone with internet. I just had a paper map. And I, I walked all day, went to small alleys, went to the famous places. And it was just such a cultural shock. It's really a different world. Like, even if you move from Europe to U.S., you would have a little bit of a shock. But it's Western world where right? you're still going to have the same kind of buildings, you know, the same kind of people. Over there was just like it's a new planet. So that's one of the best memory I ever had. Oh, Greece, or maybe uh, this part of Europe, is it, do you think it's the same as Greece? In some way, it's I, because it's closer to the east, maybe. I, I, uh, I think sometimes that it's really um, the culture is close to Asia. Uh, Asia and I was watching like videos in Vietnam how crazy the streets are and of course here it's not that crazy mm -hmm. but we have like a ton of uh, motorbikes going around all over the, the place so it's with the helmets that... yeah they're wearing the helmets on the uh, on their elbow <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it's like 
um, it's not that crazy like Vietnam, but it's not the same as France or the US. So I get that they get even more shocked when they get there. But for me, it's a shock, but it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> I don't know how to explain I, it. I it's you, like yeah. I'm in a place yeah, that's the, in between. <laughs> and I guess that's that's also what is hard for me to, if I want to do intercultural branding and say Europe and, and US, even in, within the US, you have so many different cultures. So like as someone that really wants to learn about all of those cultures at some time, at some point, I need to do some kind of generalization, take, make some assumptions and, you know, use stereotypes to, to make choices. So, you know, you have to find the right balance between, you know, learning enough about every single culture or, you know, try to make the generalization. Mm -hmm. I, I think that you're going to, to get it. <laughs> Well, I'm very, you know, I, I, I guess I'm very inclusive mm -hmm. in a sense that I don't want to forget, like if I'm in a room with a lot of people and someone doesn't really feel comfortable, I would try to solve that issue. So everybody can, then like nobody feels like they're outside or like left out. And I guess that's the same thing with that cultural, uh, you know, learning about different cultures. I don't want to do the mistakes of forgetting something. I see. That's very kind. Uh, you're very kind as a, as a person. So, yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, so lot. Um, another thing that I do uh, before we end the podcast mm -hmm. with, uh, with everyone, I ask them like three fast questions. <laughs> you can answer them like the first thing that pops in your mind and then talk more about it or you can do it like slow. It's just fast questions, not fast answers. <laughs> so... Do uh, do as a, as we Okay, that's pretty cool. I like it. Let's try. So I remember that you play a lot of guitar. <laughs> uh, which is your favorite music band? At the moment, it's Wolfpack. I don't know <laughs> who they are. It's funk, <laughs> uh, like new oh, kind funk, of funk. Okay. Like, yeah. Okay. Put the link in uh, the description. People need to know about that. You need to send me the link so I can hear it. <laughs> it's extremely funky. Okay. So do you play also funk? What, what yeah. do you play? Normal? And that's my, I used to try to play, you know, the same thing as business. I used to try to do everything for everybody. And in, in guitar, I used to want to learn every, almost every genre. Now I focus on funk a lot. Like it's all about the groove. Yeah, I think, but that's exactly, I think what you need to do, you explore a lot of things and then you, you focus mm -hmm. on the thing that you, yeah. you want. Yeah, you have to explore before, you know, I guess, yeah. Second question is, uh, what's an Asian food that everyone should try? My favorite is kind of chow mein, but that's classic. You can get that anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Something you don't really get. Was it uh, better there? Was it more, oh, more yeah. original? More? Well, even every C has their recipe. My favorite is the Shanghai one, way more mm -hmm. than the Taiwanese one. Sorry, okay. Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the Taiwan is famous for the beef noodle soup, which is very good also. Um, Xiaolong Bao is also very good. I don't know what this is. It's uh, a <laughs> dumpling, a steamed dumpling. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're also changing the names, uh, changing. We are changing the names. <laughs> well, yeah, you, that Xiaolong Bao like, is um, the, the, the Chinese. I love the Vietnamese spring rolls, mm, which nem. they call them, and they call them nem. Mm. <laughs> it's so, funny because yeah. in French we say nem actually. Yes. That's you true. said that in Greece too? Yeah. Oh, cool. No, in Greece we say spring rolls. Oh, okay. Uh, but so my nem. mother, it's from, she's from France, so we learned to, uh -huh. to call it nem. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, France and, and Vietnam as a, have a yeah. you know, shared history. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, and last question, um, what's an underestimated skill that everyone should have? Empathy. Empathy. Oh yeah. I like that one. <laughs> it's, I guess you can call it a skill or soft skill. That's something you can practice mm -hmm. more. That and curiosity, I guess. Mm -hmm. I guess curiosity first, cause that would, um, 
or they would kind of, of make you more empathic, empathic, empathic. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> yeah, I see. But curiosity is is driving empathy, I guess. Yeah. Or empathy can drive curiosity. Hmm, I guess they go both and hands in hand and in hand. Love both of them. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> uh, what else? When where people can find you? Do you have your website that oh, you're working um, on? I have my own website that, that that's that's focused on identity and web design, this kind of stuff. Which, if you ever go to, don't ask me for because I don't do that anymore. But if you want some <laughs> branding, I would love to help you brand strategy. Um, and I'm really rebuilding, rebranding my myself, my company. And I really want to try to help. Like, if someone has questions, and like, I would really like love to jump on a call and just answers for free. At the beginning, I'm not going to do that forever, but you know, try <laughs> yeah. to get my hand more into when I do that, the, it's win-win because I'm also learning about different cultures, different kind of companies. So I love doing that. I have my Instagram. It's F L O underscore P H I L, which is my first and last name, Florian Philippe. Um, and that's about it. I'm not, I have the LinkedIn. I would rather you add me on LinkedIn. And do you have also some, um, how do you call it? Oh, I remember, I don't remember the, um, the website now you're writing some articles or, uh, Oh, medium. Yeah. yeah I, medium. I started writing on medium. Um, I guess I can send you the link cause it's a long URL. Mm -hmm. Any final thought? Maybe if someone that want to start, uh, Maybe he saw this video and he didn't know what's brand strategy and he got that spark that you got what he how he should start any tip in the beginning. Contact me because I know exactly <laughs> how you feel and I want to help you. Like it's like a it's like a little brother or like a past me. If I could help past me, I would do it. So if you are me a year or two ago, I would or even earlier, I would love to to be able to share what I've learned. So you don't do all that's the awesome. mistakes that I've done. And <laughs> I don't have it. a I don't think big wasted. audience right now. So that's good for you because you, <laughs> if I did, you're gonna get, you will get like <laughs> 50,000 <laughs> emails. No, I wish. <laughs> I really want to help people. So yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you for being my, my guest. Thank you so much. I really liked it. And thank you for pushing me to, to start podcast again. <laughs> Let's do another one next week. <laughs> That's great. Let's go. I hope my uh, my French accent was not too um, horrible to listen to. I, I don't even. Maybe uh, you need to create subtitles French. for people. <laughs> <laughs>